Hello, everyone, and welcome to the SAS Via Release Highlight Show. We are back at the Aria Resort and Casino in Las Vegas for SAS Innovate. We are here to give you a full recap of this conference straight from the source. We're so excited to be here. I think it's time to check in and get our badges. Let's go. If you didn't know by now, SAS Innovate is our premier event dedicated to AI and analytics for business leaders, partners, and technical users. Here we have over 100 breakout sessions, 18 hands-on workshops, over 10 hours of networking opportunities, and keynote speakers from people like Cassie Kozarkov and Adam Grant. Wow, that is a lot of great content. We can't think of a better place to cover the latest and greatest when it comes to SaaS Via. This event brings big and exciting technology news from our founder, Dr. Goodnight, and our executive team. We heard tons of announcements just now on main stage. Why don't we dive into some of the SaaS Via news this conference unveiled? I think a great place to start is with one of the buzziest topics of the week, SaaS Via Workbench. Let's go find our expert, Joe Madden, and learn more. Let's do it. Hi, Joe. Welcome to the show. Hey, Brianna. Thanks for having me today. We're happy you're here. So I'm really excited to hear from you about SAS Via Workbench. Can you tell us what this is and why it's so important? Yeah, absolutely. So we're so excited about SAS Via Workbench. It's a brand new offering that's coming out very soon. It's a standalone, lightweight coding environment that makes it easy for data scientists and developers to get started immediately and code in, in the language of your choice. SAS, of course, is there by default, uh, but we've got it enabled for Python, and we'll soon have our use cases as well be supported. So very excited. Excellent. So you talked about being able to code in your language of choice, and we know that those of us out there who are developers or modelers, the language that we're using and the tools we're using are very important to us. So how does SAS Via Workbench allow coders to work with the tools that they're comfortable with? That's a great question. Developers totally have strong preferences on tools and we're here for it. Workbench was built by our development team with the mindset of being for developers. So all of the tools that developers want to use, our intention is to bring them into the box. Visual Studio Code is used by 70% of developers in the world today, and that's our first primary path for developers. We also have Jupyter Lab, which is there for Python developers, and we're taking feedback now of if there's new tools, techniques to use, we want to hear from our customers, so please reach out to us, and we are more than happy to prioritize your feedback. I'm so happy to hear that. And on that note, I heard that a small group of customers were able to access SAS via Workbench early while it was in preview. Can you tell us what have these customers been thinking? Yeah, we've had all sorts of customer feedback, ranging from formal focus groups with some of our longtime customers. And even this week, we had a hackathon event. Uh, we got to name our first company uh, who's a hackathon winner uh, here at Innovate. So we're, the feedback we're getting is just very positive. There's so much excitement about being able to just get started using, say, GPUs immediately. Uh, this is something our customers have been asking for for a long time, and so we're, we couldn't be more happy to hear the positive response. The only feedback we've heard negative is, when can we get it sooner? So it's always, for me, that's a good sign. Absolutely, it very much is a good sign. Yeah. And we know that the launch of SAS Via Workbench is coming very soon. What are you most excited for when it comes to this launch? And tell us, when can users get a hold of it? Yes, so first off, it'll be available at the end of this quarter. We're already in Q2 for the year, so it'll be end av available at the end of this quarter. And for me, the most exciting thing I, I'm, I'm fired up about is the new Python API. So I did not learn SAS in school, but I learned a little bit of Python. And our new API allows you to write Python code, but there's a magic trick where you're actually executing SAS code, SAS analytics with our new SAS via Python API. We're so excited about this. It's going to be available in Workbench, and it will be available in Via 4 as well. So we could not be more excited to release that soon. Excellent. Thank you so much for being here, Joe. Well, thanks for having me, Brianna. Thank you. SAS via Workbench is a unique, flexible experience that allows coders to work with the tools they prefer and be more productive. We're so glad we got to fill you in on SAS via Workbench as we prepare for launch. Speaking of productivity, we have to talk about generative AI. SAS is moving beyond just the hype of generative AI and is working to make it a reality for our customers. We tracked down the expert, Marinella Profi. Let's talk to her now. 
Hi, Marinella. Thanks for being back on the show. Hi, Tiago. Thanks for having me again. Of course. Let's get right into it. You spoke on main stage about equipping developers to be more productive. Can you break down the pieces of generative AI that SaaS is working on? Absolutely. Uh, we're empowering, we, are, we want to empower developers worldwide to be more productive in their daily job, and we are doing that by announcing very specific technology. The first thing is around generative AI and giving the developers the ability to integrate the large language models to augment their existing business processes and build real world use cases for specific industries and specific people. At the center of that is SaaS VIA, our data and AI platform that we have extended to allow them to use our APIs to integrate, embed, and orchestrate large language models as part of their existing business processes. The second way is SaaS Data Maker, is our software as a service new solution that we just announced in private preview. It's going to give uh, developers, data scientists, and users the ability to generate high quality synthetic data. Uh, and the third one is uh, via Copilot. We announced via Copilot, which is going to be an AI personal assistant that is going to help developers, coders, data scientists, business analysts to accelerate all the most time consuming tasks across the entire data and AI lifecycle. We just talked a lot about empowering developers, but there's a lot of developers that are worried that AI is coming for their jobs. Is there anything you have to say to those people that are worried? I'm an AI developer myself, and believe me when I say that I believe there has never been a better time in history to be a developer than today. Artificial intelligence is our ally, is our partner that can augment our productivity. Um, I, I don't believe there is never going to be a future where no developer is going to be needed. Whoever tells me that has never built or developed and put into production a real world use case. I'm hearing leaders saying you don't need to know how to code. Who's going to build the systems? Who's going to code the systems? Behind every no code, low code magic that you see out there, there is code being generated and artificial intelligence alone won't suffice. You still are going to need a human that's going to validate the generated code, that needs to see the refined code, maintaining orchestrated over time across many you know, innovations that will happen in the programming language because we're not over yet, right? Um, and so, absolutely, I encourage all developers to continue to learn how to code and continue to learn how to code with AI. Like you said, there's never been a better time in history to be a developer than today. Let's look into the future of SaaS. In the next year or two, where do you see generative AI headed? I, uh, I see generative AI headed into uh, having hyper-specialized skills for specific industries. Um, I believe large language models alone do not solve business problems. It's all going to come down to identifying real world use cases that solve specific problems for specific industries and specific people. That is exactly the approach that we are following at SaaS with the recently announced SaaS models. We are selling models as a product, which means packaging our 47 years of industry expertise, analytics expertise, uh, with generative AI as well embedded for some of the models where and when it makes sense, and selling this as products ready to use and ready to consume for, a pro for our customers across different industries. So, the future of generative AI is going to be industry driven. Perfect. Marinella, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for coming back on. Thanks, Tiago. As Marinella said, there has been no better time in history to be a developer than right now. I absolutely agree. And one great tool that developers can add to their generative AI toolkit is being able to work with co-pilots. Let's hear more about SaaS via co-pilots from Lee Cullen and John Lehrer. Hi, John and Lee. Thank you so much for being here. It's great to be here, Brianna. Thank you. Well, I am so excited to ask you both today about SaaS via Copilots. Can you tell us what this technology is and what is the new user experience that SaaS is working on here? Yeah, let's say you are a data scientist building models, or maybe you're a data engineer transforming data, or maybe you're even a compliance officer managing your data. And imagine interacting with the SaaS via 4 platform in a new way, where you can conversationally query the platform to increase your productivity, to maybe reduce upstream dependencies you have on other teams, and to complete tasks you might not have been able to do before. And so this new SaaS via Copilot becomes a personalized experience to you. And so we want to talk a little bit about our uh, SaaS code gen co-pilot, and John will tell you a little bit more about that. Yeah. Well, code generation sounds very exciting. We can't wait to learn more. Please tell us about what you're working on. 
Yeah, so as Lee said, the um, Via Copilot strategy is to help users leverage existing Via tools. And the first tool we're focusing on is the SaaS language. So the CodeGen feature within SaaS Via Copilot will look at generating SaaS code, explaining SaaS code, and adding comments to existing SaaS code. Programmers and non-programmers alike can get behind that, I think. Exactly. Thank you so much for, for talking with us today. As you can tell, generative AI is a hot topic in tech, and we're still not done talking about it. That's right. There are lots of amazing sessions happening here at SAS Innovate, but one I think you can't miss is from Lee, and it's called the SAS Roadmap to Generative AI. And lucky for you, you don't have to. It's available right now on demand. That sounds like a really good one. There's so many sessions, I'd just be kicking myself if I didn't go to at least one. I heard that Bill Wasatsky just wrapped up one about quantum computing. I'm going to go see if I can find him. Did he just leave? Hey, Bill. You just finished a session on quantum computing. I'm curious to hear how that went. What is quantum computing, and how does it relate to SAS VIA? Hey, this is a great opportunity. Um, so quantum computing is using the phenomenon of quantum mechanics to perform computations um, using ones and zeros and every possibility in between. It allows the two main quantum phenomena that we use is superposition and entanglement. Superposition is the one and zero that was just mentioned and every possibility in between. And the quantum entanglement is when you take two qubits and they are entangled in, across space. So knowing the measurement of one, you know the measurement of the other. This greatly speeds up computational times and allows you to tackle problems that classically you might not be able to do infinite possibilities between one and zero. Yeah, you know, like for example, imagine yourself, you know, in a mountain range, right? And I tell you to find, you know, a lake or a find a point and you have no other way of doing it. And you'll check this way, you'll check that way, you'll check all the different possibilities, but that could take you a lifetime, right? If you don't have any, any other way of seeing it. What quantum is like is it allows you to see the mountain range from the top down and see every single possible path at the exact same time and make these decisions simultaneously. So it gives you the best possible vantage point. Yes. Uh, what advantage does quantum computing provide for the regular SaaS VIA user, and which industry would benefit the most from it? So for the regular VIA user, um, it, it's really across industries, right? So we're looking at machine learning, we're looking at AI, we're looking at optimization, we're looking at um, quantum chemistry, we're looking at fraud, we're looking at you know, risk across the, you know, the, the broad spectrum. What we're trying to do is we're trying to take the quantum out of the quantum, right? So we want to in, in, in integrate it into SAS VIA, in SAS Studio or Workbench or across the entire product suite. So the users could select to run something in quantum without having to reformulate the problem, without having to know about superposition or entanglement and, and get results. So what should we look forward to in the future when it comes to quantum computing and SAS VIA? Um, I think we should look at certain areas, like you know, um, optimization's a big one. I, I think that fraud, I think that um, quantum chemistry, to be able to um, look at all different possible permutations of a molecule at the same time, instead of testing one and then another, another. Protein folding, these are very, very strong areas that we're gonna be looking at. Um, machine learning and AI, those are, those are there, but uh, I think that's where we're going to be. Sounds like a very exciting topic with infinite possibilities. It's, it's, it's the most exciting thing I've ever worked on because it's, it's so new. It's, it's uncharted territory. The, 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 the rules change every single day. Um, every week I'm reading about some sort of new advancements. So whatever we were looking at before, doesn't necessarily change, but you have to think about it a little bit differently. There's different options, there's different technologies and, and, and things that, that we're looking at every day. Like you said, it's uncharted territory, and we're honored to be able to talk to a pioneer in this field. Bill, thank you so much. Thanks so much, thanks. Great talking to you. Well, Brianna, we covered a lot today. We talked about generative AI, co-pilots, SAS via Workbench, and quantum computing. Yes, we did. We covered some really great topics. And if you want to take a bit of a deep dive on any of these and learn about much more, many of these sessions from SAS Innovate are available on demand right now. 
Just go to innovates.sas.com, register, and you'll gain access to our general sessions, our wonderful keynotes, and more than 20 breakout sessions. We would also love to hear from you. Out of everything that we talked about today at SAS Innovate, what excites you the most? Let us know in the comments below. If you're watching this on YouTube, why not give us a like, subscribe to the SaaS Users YouTube channel, and click on that bell to get notified for when we go live for our next show. That's right. And that is the end of this show. We will be back in June. So stick around and catch us then. That was SaaS Innovate, and we are SaaS Out of Eight. Peace out.